Teams in Society is a team which um, has one focus, which is the real knowledge of genetics. It really spans everything from uh, how cells behave uh, at, the, at the single cell level, because our genes really the blueprints for all of the proteins that really make us what we are. One of the things we're interested in is a process called horizontal gene transfer. So it turns out that bacterial cells are able to share genes with each other and they can do this quite efficiently. And this is to some extent a worry from a biomedical point of view because it means that if a bacterium acquires a gene that makes it, for example, resistant to an antibiotic, it can share it with all of its friends quite quickly. And when it shares it, it actually keeps a copy for itself. So it's a kind of archiving process and it poses some threats to us because it means that bacteria seem always to have an answer to any of the mechanisms and methods that we employ to try to limit their behaviour. The information from the Human Genome Sequencing Project has allowed us to understand the causes of many genetic disorders and with that comes the powerful ability or capability to start to design therapies which are targeted to the problem. We're interested in genetic disorders of the eye. The disease we work on, which is called retinitis pigmentosa, can cause such visual loss that patients with the disease lose all perception of light. And that is because they've lost many of the cells at the back of the eye that are involved in visualization of light in a particular gene that's encoding a particular protein that's important in maintaining the function of the photoreceptor cells. That mode of action of a genetic disorder is, is present in many different genetic disorders. Since 2002, I've been involved as a principal investigator in a very large international collaboration, the largest in the world, of autism genetics researchers known as the Autism Genome Project. We've identified that very rare changes in genome structure or rare mutations that contribute to the cause of autism in about 10% of cases. And this has been very helpful because, as I said, this helps us to, to know which genetic mutations might have a profound effect on the developing brain to produce a condition such as autism. We're trying to understand the signals that cells release when they're damaged and those signals actually initiate an immune response. What we're interested in are the molecules that are actually called alarmants that are released when, when you damage tissue. Some of these alarmants are also mutated in disease, so we're trying to understand the alarmants at the moment that are involved in, in psoriasis, and we're trying to understand exactly how that is in order to then neutralize that behavior and potentially cure that particular condition. Research is about developing us as a species, and clearly research in the area of genetics gets at the very heart of the human condition. So one of the most exciting things in neuroscience now is the ability to uh, activate groups of cells in the brain using light. In particular cells in a brain, you can express a protein that comes from alga. So if you express, for instance, channel rhodopsin in the, in the pleasure center of an animal's brain and you shine light, the animal will experience pleasure. So this involves sort of genetic engineering, which is to express this gene in particular cells in an animal so that now you can put, you can with light have remote control over these particular neurons and find out what is the function of these subgroups of neurons in the brain. Fifteen years ago now, we founded a company called Identigen. It's a very successful company. It's based on, in the Trinity um, Innovation Campus. And it works on genetic testing of cattle products like meat and tracing them back to their source. All the, the news about horse in beef burgers. Actually, they were the company that did the first testing for that, and that's work that has an importance for an economic importance for, for food, uh, for the economy of, of Ireland. So they're, they're world leaders in that field. You cannot do wonderful interdisciplinary science unless the basic disciplines are extraordinarily good. The genetics department in Trinity College has been historically extremely good. What we've done here, which is unique and quite successful, is we've maintained disciplinary identity, but at the same time try to exploit the benefits of cross-department collaboration. We have in Trinity absolute expertise in the fundamental areas 
of the ability to analyze genome sequences and the ability to manipulate genome sequences. And these fundamental strengths can actually be used much more widely across teams. So in some sense, Genes and Society is not only a research team in itself, but is a team that can vitalize and drive many of the other themes that exist here.